Hello and welcome to another video. Today we've got a HDA for you called the Surface Placer. And I use this HDA to create this render scene as you can see from here. By the end of the video, you'll have an idea of how to use the tool and I'll be going through the render scene itself and how I set it up and the lighting. So right, let's dive into this. Right, here we are on Houdini, and this is the scene you'll be able to download with the HDA. There's a render scene set up here, but first let me go through a demo of the Surface Placer itself. So if I dive in here, this is a Surface Placer node. It's got a couple of settings in here, but first let me just show you the basics of how it works. So on the left hand side, this input, if I go into it, is a series of pots that have been modeled in Houdini. Each one of them has a variant attribute and it will use that to determine which asset will be scattered. So if I go back to here and on the right hand side, we just have a simple terrain. So if I view the tool here to enter the tool, all you do is you hit enter. And this will now spawn an asset on the mouse itself. It will follow the terrain from the camera ray and it will use the normal to basically orient the asset itself. You can use left click as I saw there to place an asset down. And you can use middle mouse to remove the, the asset itself. Middle mouse wheel will rotate the asset. And holding down shift in middle mouse will choose which asset to spawn. So you can place them down like this middle mouse. And now you have a series of assets. If you do shift and control a middle mouse, that will move the asset along the normal. And if you just use control, it will scale back to itself like this. So let's say you wanted to go back to the default. What you can do is you can hold down shift and middle mouse, and that will reset all the parameters there. So as you can see, this is a really quick way to basically lay out assets like this and choose them out here. Fast way to get a nice layout. And you could have lots and lots of assets coming in here and this middle mouse scroll will keep going through them until you find what you want. So as you can see here on the right hand side, what this is doing is when I'm placing it down, it was spawning an instance that you can see on the side here. So if you, if you middle mouse over this, you'll see there's an instance string parameter that gets created. So if I, um, if I do this itself and view this actually through the viewport, you can see that all the different instances are coming up here. So if I wanted to, let's say, change instance seven, what I can do is I can go down to this parameter here, and this will now change instance seven to whatever you wanted to. So if you didn't like a particular rotate, or you the height, or the scale itself, you can adjust. There's also a transform option down here. So if you go to transform, this will basically move the asset in the X and Y, so that was quite a lot there, X and Y relative to its rotation. So if you rotate the asset, it'll also rotate this transform. And same with the axes, this will, this is relative to its actual position itself, as you can see with the Y rotation there and the Z. You can also override the normal. So if you don't want to use the normal from the mesh, you can override it per instance there. So there's also a couple of settings here, which I'll show you. There's rotation sensitivity. So if I escape from this, from this tool and clear all and enter, what you can do is this rotation sensitivity. So if I change this to something like five, you can see, and as I middle mouse, you can get a much more precise angle. The scale sensitivity and the height works kind of the same way. You can, you can scale up like that. Or if you change this to say one, two, five, you can see that it's much slower scaling. Same with the height. 
And then if you change this to, let's say, 125, you can see much less sensitive. There's a couple of parameters here that you can tick. So let's say I'm picking this asset and I place here. You see how the next one that's on my mouse is exactly the same in terms of the height and the rotation and the, the, the variant and the scale. So what you can do is if you didn't want to copy this across, for instance, I didn't want to match the height. When I click on this, you'll see the next one will reset the height back to what it is. So what you could do is you could, if I change this back, the um, sensitivity back, you can see that I can scroll this one up way up here. And when I click, it will go down here. But maybe I wanted to match that. So what you can do is you can up here and the next one will be there. So it works. Works exactly the same for both scale, rotation and variant like this. So now if I click this one, you'll see it's basically reset the asset back to what it is. Cool. There's the output terrain is the only other option. And then there's this also this beta uh, ground collision, which um, I'm still working on the code a little bit, but you can try it. It might not work in all scenarios. And what it will do is it will try and orient the asset so that it doesn't collide with the terrain at all and it'll rotate it, stuff like this. So it's a little bit slow to use it ticked on. So you could, you could treat that as a post process if you wanted to. Um, last bit is this control panel here. So if you drop it down here, this is all the controls I was talking about, about entering middle mouse, shift, mouse shift, all that kind of stuff. Controls are there if you ever have to look back and, and wonder which what what's doing what. So I'll come to that. Anyway, so that's the tool itself. It's fairly easy to set up and it's kind of self-explanatory. It makes it super fast for layouts. So what I'll do is I'll run through some of the um, some of the setup for the render scene that you will have seen at the start um, and give you kind of a little run through of how I've done it. So as you saw from the start, these are the clay pots that I've been using. Uh, this is a little clay pot that I set up like a tool um, and it inputs a, inputs a curve and then a handle and then it will build you this. So same with this guy. Two, this one has two handles either side and it will build you this kind of pot. So you can have a little look of how I built all these different pots in Houdini. There's um, simple ground terrain. And then as you can see from here, this is using the pot. This is using the pot, uh, pot layout. So this is the surface placer. Um, and you can see that how fast this was just to lay out the pots for this shot that we rendered. This honestly took about five to 10 minutes to do. Whereas having to manually do this might just be a bit, bit of a pain in the ass when it comes to doing that kind of stuff. Um, there's also just some simple uh, rock assets that I'm using. So let's dive into lots and I'll show you. So we're bringing in the ground here. Um, we've got the pot layout and this pot layout is a combination of the pots that have been hand placed here in the center of the camera. And then there's also a scatter and I'm combining those guys together. So it looks like that. There's a rock layout here, which is just simple pebbles and rocks around the, the pots itself, just to give the ground a bit of texture. There's a gobo here, and this is used to create all the shadowing on top of the pots that you saw in the render itself. So what I can do is jump into here and I'll show you. I hide this. So there's a simple structure that I've made here. There's a kind of tree that's just a basic tree just to get break up in the shadows. And I'm copying that to points, so I'm just making kind of a couple of them. And then there's two hand placed ones that I wanted for specific shadows. And then there's just fabrics here, which are overlaying on the on the actual structure itself. Uh, those just to give a bit of break up in the shadow and give a bit of more patchy. And that's just a simple um, just a simple grid. Uh, Sorry, I just made delete that. Sub network two, there you go. Yeah, it's just a simple um scatter of planes here, and then they're simmed onto the structure using vellum. So that itself 
causes gives it a really really nice like shadow so there's a hdri here and a and a directional so if i chuck on karma you can see let me load in the camera yeah there you go so you get some nice kind of shadows and breakups and patches which work very well for the render itself as you can see here um only other thing i could have a look at is there's some materials there's just some kind of basic clay pot and i'm using a couple of masks that i've writ out of the uh, pot creator itself and a bit of a terrain as well and rock but that's about it um i hope you've enjoyed this demo give the uh, hda download there's a link in the description for that if you have any bugs or anything give me a shout out and i'll be sure to create that or any feature requests as well if you think of something that might help out I can give that a go um, um and as always uh i hope Hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video.